Bill here at PowerStrokeHelp.com with Tom Brown, Certified Lubrication Specialist. Tom, what are you going to talk about today? Today I want to go over what we've all been waiting for, which is oil change information about power strokes. Really? And so... So you're going to simply... So, so on that, not this last one, but the one before you got us all confused, now you're going to straighten it out, right? Absolutely. Okay. Tom's going to straighten us out because Ford Motor Company issued some things that saying that no more of this oil and you got to use this oil and avoid your warranty. Tom has been doing his research and he's going to clarify all those things. So what's the title of this uh, video, Tom? Well, it's actually going to be a follow-on to your extreme video the other day. Oh, you like that one. I like that one. So I already had this thing all set and I was calling it something else and I thought, you know, extreme works too. Well, Tom, I'm going to leave it to you, brother. Okay, thank you. And, uh, you know, show them what you got. All right. You all are in good hands, Tom Brown, and email Tom. Tom uh, has his info at bestsyntheticoils.com. You can email me, Bill, at PowerStrokeHelp.com anytime you want, but any of, any of these related questions, I'm just going to go ahead and forward to Tom. Um, and Thank you, sir. Run with it, Tom. Thank you. All right, so what I want to talk about today is I want to start off with an overview, and it's kind of a history lesson as well, as to what oil has been used in different power stroke engines and some of the other specifics about them that are related to that as well. So if you'll notice up here in the top left corner, I'm starting out with the 7.3, the 6.0, the 6.4, and the 6.7 engines. And across the top, I've got what emissions equipment the vehicle was equipped with, what the oil spec was when that engine was produced new, how much horsepower at the end of the production for that engine, same thing for torque, how much oil it carried in uh, quartz, and what was the normal and severe oil change interval for that engine. So starting across the top up here with the 7.3, one of the things that everybody liked about the 7.3 was that it did not have any emissions equipment on it. Bill and I were just talking about this. There were some 7.3s that were produced in California that may have had a catalytic converter on them. But other than that, they were pretty well clean. When a 7.3 was on the market new, they were using CH4 oil spec. I'm not telling you that's what you need to use in it today. That's what came in them from the factory. They had 275 horsepower and 525 foot-pounds of torque at the end of their production run in about 2002 or 2003. And they had 15 quarts of oil and the oil change interval on them was 5,000 miles for normal oil, normal duty and 3,000 miles for severe duty. Same information for the 6.0s, but the, the first thing you notice about a 6.0 was that it, in, it incorporated for the first time exhaust gas recirculation. Uh, that was one of the problem areas on the 6.0s. Uh, and because of that, the oil industry had to step it up a notch and produce and blend an oil known as CI4. And a little bit later, they made an in-service modification of that and they added the little plus sign to it to make it even better. Uh, so CI4 and CI4 Plus were the oils that were on the street when the 6.0s were out. On the 6.0 you had a peak horsepower number of 325 foot-pounds of torque at 570, also carried 15 quarts of oil, but we extended the normal oil change interval out to 7,500 and the severe duty out to 5,000. One of the reasons they were able to do that was because they were using better oil. Uh, this engine and the 7.3s are very hard on oil because of the type of injector that they have and the high pressure oil pump, which shears the oil down, makes the oil lose viscosity and get thinner. The next one was the 6.4. Now we start really seeing some of the emission problems because we not only did we have EGR, it was actually an increased amount of EGR, but we also had the diesel particulate filter, the DPF, which is that soot trap that is in the exhaust stream. Uh, they had to make an adjustment to the engine oil again. They moved up to CJ4 uh, to try to help the oil combat the amount of extra soot and dirt that was getting down in the engine. But that engine was rated for 350 horsepower and 650 foot-pounds of torque. Still carried 15 quarts of oil. But again, we're extending that oil change interval out to 10,000 miles normal and 5,000 miles on uh, severe duty. But in reality, very few 6.4s that were running all their emissions equipment could ever reach those numbers without shearing their oil and having severe fuel dilution of their oil. 
because the regeneration process was dumping so much uh, fuel into the engine, it would uh, contaminate the oil before those numbers were hit usually. And then finally, the 6.7. Uh, we've got EGR, DPF, and selected catalyst reduction with the use of the, uh, the urea fluid, the diesel exhaust fluid. The oil spec, uh, this was the controversial video Bill was talking about a minute ago. Uh, the, the trucks were originally put on the street with CJ4. Uh, that is still a good oil for them. Or you can use a, the newest CK4 oil as long as it also meets the new Ford spec. Uh, we've got another power jump. We've got a horsepower and torque war on here. We're up to 440 and 925 on the 6.7 with the latest production. That's a 37% increase in horsepower and a 43% increase in torque over the 7.3 at the top of the chart here. An interesting note here is that the oil capacity on the 6.7s actually dropped down to 13 quarts. And I suspect that, I've never seen Ford explain why they did that, but I suspect it's because they assume that the 7.3 is not as hard on the oil as the previous generation motors were. Oil change intervals are 10,000 miles for normal. 70, or it's actually, uh, they do not list a severe duty oil change interval. Ford has equipped these engines with an oil life monitoring system, and they say, hey, the, the system will tell you when to change it based on your driving conditions. I review a lot of oil analysis reports every week. Uh, I have not seen very many 6.7s ever reach uh, 10,000. Uh, frankly, that's because I don't think very many uh, owners will take them that far. Uh, the average that I'm seeing on 6.7s is probably somewhere around the 7,500 uh, range. And that's a combination of severe and normal driving. But frankly, the, most, the thing that causes the most problems with 6.7s is people who drive them like a passenger car and they start them up and let them idle before they go anywhere and they drive around town under real low, low power demands, low heat demands, and fuel builds up in the oil. In this next part, I want to talk about what I'm referring to as an extreme oil change. Uh, and I am addressing this to power stroke community but this can really be used on any internal combustion engine that utilizes an oil pump and an oil filter. So let me start off here at the top. The, the foundation for this is a premium full synthetic engine oil. These oils are shear stable, which provides you with the most important aspect of an oil, which is protection. Uh, protection from wear, protection from two pieces of metal inside your engine from touching each other. Uh, the next part that these, uh, next aspect of these oils or features of these is that they have a high total base number rating, uh, which means that they can control acid, neutralize acid, for a lot longer than a regular oil can because they simply have more of the acid control additive and a better acid control additive in them than lower priced oils do. They also contain a very high dose of a very high quality detergent package which keeps your motor clean and all of this adds up to a very long life for the oil. The oil can simply last longer than a regular oil can. The next part that I want to talk about here on the, the diamond is the, your full flow filter. Think of this as your filter that's currently on your engine right now except we're going to replace that with a high efficiency, high capacity full flow filter that has an efficiency rating uh, at 98.7%, which is absolute from a scientific perspective, at 20 microns. Basically, it's going to catch everything at 20 microns and larger uh, that is flowing through your engine along with the oil. Now, this is going to catch the big stuff that would cause catastrophic damage almost immediately or immediately if it got through your engine. This oil filter it will last longer and it will be able to hold more dirt you won't have to change it as frequently. The next part, and this is a very important part of this, is the bypass oil filter. This is an additional oil filter on top of the filter that currently that is uh, currently on your engine or came with it from the factory. Uh, and this takes a small amount of the oil, about uh, seven to 10% of the oil at any given time that's circulating through the engine will be diverted over through this bypass oil filter and it will scrub that oil down to, uh, to two microns at a 98.7% rating. This virtually eliminates wear inside your engine from dirt. And that is the leading cause of wear inside your engine is dirt particles that are between seven and 10 microns. 
And if you'll notice back over here on your full flow filter, it's only catching on its best day 20 micron dirt or larger. So the, the dirt that's doing all the damage and causing all the wear inside your engine is going right through the full flow filter. So if you want to catch that dirt, you've got to use a bypass filter. This, can, this bypass filter can also help the full flow filter and the oil last longer because they're not going to get filled up with dirt uh, and they're going to hold that dirt and so the detergent package doesn't have to do as much work. And then the last piece of this four part extreme oil change, and this is critical, is the oil analysis. And we've talked about this before, Bill's done several videos on this, but I just want to show you how it all fits into a strategy that can completely change your oil change habits and your oil change strategy. Not only can you use oil analysis to look backwards and find out what has happened in your engine, and that's the typical way that most people use oil analysis. They'll pull an oil sample when they're changing their oil, they'll send it off to the laboratory, the, the lab results will come back, and the person will look at their oil report and say, oh, this is what occurred in my engine in the past. I'm either good, or I've got some wear metals, or I've got some fuel dilution, or maybe I have a coolant problem, or, you know, that oil was probably okay, or maybe I had run that oil too long. All of those things are focused in the past. But what I want you to also do is to use oil analysis to look forward and predict forward. That's its most powerful aspect. The most powerful feature of oil analysis is the ability to use it to look forward and be able to predict how much or how long can I run my oil uh, before I need to do anything with it. So by doing both of that, looking back and predicting forward, you're not guessing. You're actually using results from a series of oil analysis uh, samples uh, that are called building a trend. And so when you first start doing this, you'll take several oil samples about seven to 10,000 miles apart for four or five samples to build that trend as to how does this oil and these filters work in your engine with your driving conditions. This helps you greatly reduce the risk that you're going to ever do damage to your engine. And it's also going to allow you to capture information and you're going to know if you've got a bearing going bad or a head gasket leaking or something else going on in your engine or you've got an injector leaking because all of that information is going to start showing up in your oil analysis reports. So you can then schedule when you want to have this engine worked on as opposed to having it break down on you at the worst possible time. So again, this is uh, extreme oil change. And so the next thing I'm going to show you is what does this really look like in terms of using it and money that you can save with this. So in terms of what does an extreme oil change look like from a cost perspective, uh, I just laid out some numbers here for you on the board uh, just to take a look and see comparing it to a conventional oil change uh, for your uh, power stroke diesel trucks. And if you watched Bill's recent extreme video, uh, one of the things he talked about was a goal that he has that when you buy a truck from him or he works on one of your trucks, he wants you to get 250,000 additional miles out of that truck after he works on it. So I said, okay, what does 250,000 miles look like in terms of oil changes? The other thing that I'm using here as an assumption is, is that you're changing your own oil and for the comparison for conventional oil changes, I'm assuming you're going down to Walmart or some other discount place and that you're buying Motorcraft 15W40 uh, conventional diesel oil and the Motorcraft oil filter for your truck. And even, like we showed on that previous chart, the, all these engines hold somewhere between 13 and 15 quarts of oil and the oil filters all average out to about $15 per oil filter, regardless of which engine. They might be a little bit more, a little bit less, but they're around $15. So when you come in here on the 7.3, for example, and as I've told you before in some of my videos, uh, one of the things I think is critical when you have a vehicle or a piece of equipment is that you make sure that you are servicing it in accordance with the service schedule that you're actually using it under. Uh, 
And if you have to make an error on whether you think you're severe or normal, always go with severe because that's going to provide better protection for your vehicle, better protection for your equipment. So the severe uh, duty oil change uh, schedule on a 7.3 was only 3,000 miles. So if you're using conventional oil, that's going to cost you $6,225 over that 250,000 miles uh, to do all of those uh, conventional oil changes. With the extreme oil change, you're going to spend $1,900 with an initial $600 upfront purchase of all of the uh, oil filters and the bypass equipment uh, and the first couple of oil sample kits or and a coolant sample kit as well. Uh, that's a $4,325 savings. Not to mention that you're also going to usually experience about a 3% increase in fuel economy. Your engine's going to last longer and it's going to start easier uh, all the time, but especially in the winter time because you're running a premium synthetic oil. Moving over to the 6.0s and 6.4s. Now, when I talk about a 6.4, I'm assuming that you have deleted the diesel particulate filter uh, and you've reprogrammed the engine to get rid of the emissions equipment. Uh, if you have not, then this is a whole different calculation uh, and I'm not going to go through that today because most of the 6.4s I see have been deleted. But if you have a question about a 6.4 that has not been deleted, contact me directly and we can talk about that. But the 6.0 and 6.4 deletes have got a severe uh, duty oil change interval of 5,000 miles. So back with that $75 oil change, that's going to cost you $3,750 over that 250,000 mile uh, life of that vehicle. The extreme oil change for a 6.0 or 6.4, $2,150 with an initial deposit of $650. $1,600 savings. In addition to all those things I mentioned earlier about miles per gallon, longer life, and easier starting. Coming over to the 6.7. Now the 6.7 does not look as good from a savings perspective and that's because Ford has significantly extended the oil change interval out on these. And so we're using a 7,500 mile oil change interval uh, even on conventional oil. So that's going to cost you $2,475 to do all those oil changes. And the extreme oil change package for that vehicle is $1,845 with an initial cost of $650 for a $630 savings. So it doesn't look as huge of a savings as you get on the 6.0s and the 7.3s. But the one thing I want you to take away from all this is whatever you're saving up here in terms of re oil changes, that is not the most important part of this. Uh, if you go back to that diamond that I put up and that ability to monitor the health of your engine and predict uh, what's going on with that engine in the future uh, and the quality of those components that we are using. These are extreme components as Bill mentioned in his other video. So if you're wanting to go beyond what is traditional, what is normal, what you're going to get typical usual results from and you want to get those extreme results then this is what you're going to want to go to uh, because you're using the absolute best components and you're documenting all of it with oil analysis. So there is no guesswork in any of this. So if you're a guy who has a single vehicle and you can save this much money over the life of that 250,000 miles, that's impressive. But who I really want to listen to this right now is the guy who has a fleet or girl who has a fleet of these vehicles. And you have five, 10, 20 or 30 or more of these. Imagine the savings that you're going to have from being able to cut your oil change cost by this much and dramatically change the future of your equipment by knowing what's going on with it before a breakdown occurs. Okay, so today we've talked about what I call an extreme oil change strategy. And as I mentioned earlier, I know most of you watching this right now are in the Power Stroke community, but don't forget this strategy works for any internal combustion engine that has an oil pump and an oil filter because we can put these oils and filters in the bypass kit and use 
uh, oil analysis on almost any engine. And so what I invite you to do is take a look at your situation, and if you think this can help you, contact me. My name is Tom Brown. I am a certified lubrication specialist, and here is my email address, info at best-synthetic-oils.com, and my phone number is 678-787-3028. If you will send me an email telling me what vehicles you have that this might work for you, I will tailor a package for you and send it back to you by email that tells you exactly what you need, exactly how to buy it, and what it's going to cost you. There will be no surprises in this. You can text me as well, uh, but if you want me to send you back the information, I'll have a, a PDF document generated for your vehicle. And this is, like I said, this is not just Power Stroke trucks. Uh, we can put this vehicle or this package together for any vehicle or piece of equipment, whether it's a farm tractor or a piece of construction equipment or a large truck, whatever. We have filters for almost anything. So we can put this together for you and start saving you tons and tons of money and make your equipment last longer. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for more videos in the future. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website PowerStrokeHelp.com and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a Power Stroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. Remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run, to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for PowerStroke owners on the internet.